Hello, I'm on to day 15 of learning back end development for ChatGPT. So let's start it. Okay, so I'm just going to go here and ask for the 15th lesson, so which is the final lesson. So, caching and optimization. Let's see what this is about. So, please give me day 15's lesson. There we go. And let's see about perform, uh, caching and optimization. So the importance of caching in backend systems. So caching temporarily stores frequently access data to reduce load times and server requests, making the system more responsive. Effective caching helps to reduce server and database load, improve response times, enhance scalability. An e-commerce website can cache uh, the most viewed products so that Every time users access the main page, the data is served quickly without repeatedly querying the database. So when implemented correctly, caching avoids repetitive calculations or database calls by keeping data which doesn't frequently sorry, change in temporary storage, allowing faster responses. For example, caching the home page's product listing and memory can prevent frequent database requests. So Redis is popular fast in-memory data structure store for uh, often used for, no, often used as a caching layer due to its speed and support for various types, strings, hashes, lists, etc. So to install Redis, uh, you can do the following command, docker run, and, okay, this command uh, with Node.js, npm install Redis, or Redis, I don't know how it's pronounced, and we can connect Redis for caching, we can do uh, client equals Redis dot create client, and then store data in Redis with an expiration, so set, I assume that's set expiration, so product list, uh, so we're caching that for an hour, then we can get the product list from the cache data. So if we haven't got the data, we can just set the data from the database. So this example shows how to set up the Redis and cache data with a timeout, the set x method stores data with an expiration in seconds. When data is requested, the cache is uh, checked first. If data is found, it's returned immediately. Otherwise, it's fetched from the database and then cached. So efficient database queries can significantly impact backend performance, indexing, uh, proper data, uh, structure selection, and query optimization ensure uh, faster data retrieval and reduce server load. Um, so using indexes for frequently queried columns. So create index IDX product name on products. Okay, so it's just a particular syntax of the query to make an index. Uh, avoiding and plus one queries in relational databases. Uh, avoid loading repeat. No, avoid loading related records and loops. Instead, use join statements or batch fetching. Indexes improve search speed on frequently accessed fields, reducing the time required for lookups. The n plus one problem occurs when a loop performs queries for each record individually, which can be optimized by joining tables or using a single query to fetch all required data. So, uh, performance monitoring and scaling backend applications. Monitoring tools provide insight into application health and helping in identifying performance bottlenecks, scaling involves uh, increasing resources or distributing load to manage higher traffic efficiently, sorry, effectively. Uh, monitoring with PM2, PM2 is a process manager for Node.js applications that also offers monitoring uh, features. Did we briefly see PM2? I think I've heard of it. It may not have been in the series though. So install PM2 to start your app. Horizontal versus vertical scaling. Vertical scaling, adding more resources to a single server. Horizontal scaling, adding more servers and distributing traffic among them, typically via a load balancer. PM2 provides monitoring for Node.js applications showing metrics like uh, memory and CPU usage. This helps identify where scaling is needed. Vertical scaling is straightforward but has limits, while horizontal scaling offers more flexibility. By handling higher loads and it's more often cost effective scale. Okay, so extra challenge research how to configure a load balancer. Okay, there's about to be. I'm right. Uh, okay, I'm just going to copy this and ask Google. Not them. 
I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I do like Bing's, um, their, like, ChatGPT style, uh, lamp, the, the UI, front-end UI of it now. Stack Overflow. Because normally the Stack Overflow search is not very good. Uh, Google is a lot better search. I mean, a lot more is invested in Google. Like, parent company Alphabet is, like, market cap of, like, two trillion, so... And yeah, stack of uh, much less than that. Okay, if I search this again. Oh, we did. How to set up a load balancer. There we go. Of course, there'd be a stack of load for that. I'm actually interested in Overflow AI. So I have two servers where multiple TCP servers running, uh, services are running on both servers and services are identical. Uh, has the same service. Okay, I'll just read the. Oh, it doesn't even an answer. I'll just change this for the ah. So, uh, IP address. Specify the IP address of a backend server you want to add to the uh, backend set. Well, specify the server port uh, to which the load balancer must direct traffic. Wait. Specify the load balancing weight to apply this to the server. For more information, see load balancer policies. So I assume this is just directing a bit of traffic to a different site. A logical entity. Oh, I'm hoping you are. Uh. Actually, yeah, I could use the copilot. It just automatically pops up. Oh, this is rewrite the copilot. Okay, I'll pull up the built in copilot to Microsoft Edge. Oh, yeah, see, they also changed the UI here. Okay. Configuring a low bouncer with a back end server involves several steps. Uh, using the general guide to get started, so ensure backend servers are up and running. Choose the load balancer. Okay. Common options include Nginx, Hackproxy, AWS, Elastic. You can install, like, say, uh, AWS ELB. Configure health checks and monitor the status of your backend servers. This ensures the load balancer only sends traffic to health servers. What is a load balancer? I my assumption currently is that it just directs. Yeah, okay. So across different server uh, servers, so that no single server gets overwhelmed. Okay, so yeah, I think that's the assignment covered, and then that is all for the back end the series. I may continue this when I need a bit more knowledge. Um, for my social media app but currently i think i've got a lot of knowledge that i need in order to carry on with the back end of my uh, social media app so thank you for following along with this series and if uh, this series doesn't um, carry on i'll see you in another one goodbye